Good evening, and thank you for joining us here at the St. Paul Community Baptist Church. We'd like to welcome members of the St. Paul Nation and anyone else joining us from around the world. We wish you all a blessed and beautiful Christmas Eve. Now go ahead and let us know where you're watching from in the comments below. I am Cherubalithia Ruth, and it's been my honor to serve this community of worshipers for the last five years as the Director of Sacred Arts. We normally would be presenting our annual Christmas cantata, but you know we are in anything but normal times. But yet a few from the ministry are here to celebrate God's love and the great gift he gave us on the first Christmas. Through the years, I've had the privilege and honor of introducing music from my upbringing to this ministry, and I've been able to share some of my favorite songs, especially during the Christmas season. And tonight, it gives me great joy to share these songs and arrangements from my favorite musical composer and arranger. I'm especially grateful to Pastor David K. Brawley, our lead pastor, for allowing the Sacred Arts Music Ministry to give special honor and tribute to the life, legacy, and memory of my pastor and greatest influence, Bishop Nathaniel Townsley, Jr., most of the songs you will hear tonight have been written or arranged by him. And although his transition this year has been devastating to say the least, it also gave me the intention to revisit this music and share it with all of you. We acknowledge that due to the pandemic, Christmas for most looks very different from Christmases in times past. But we pray that you feel God's love all around you this Christmas Eve as you join our Sacred Arts Music Ministry. Merry Christmas. We've come to give them all the glory, all the honor during this Christmas season. Let's give it to them. Donna Joe, and, and we, we wish, wish you a, a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas, my St. Paul family. Have a wonderful and safe holiday. Merry Christmas to our St. Paul family. We love you. Namaste. I just want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas from my family. Be safe. God bless you all. Hey, this is Reverend Nicole Duncan Smith, and my family to your family, we wish you a merry, merry, merry Christmas. See, I'm right here, but Greg's on the other side. Say hi, Greg. Hello. Yeah, that's Greg. And Ed is in school, but I know that she wishes you a merry Christmas too. We love you, and we want you to feel this love all throughout the holiday season. Merry Christmas, happy Kwanzaa, and happy New Year. God bless. Jesus is the reason for the season. Peace. Come on, come on. 
a come a Christmas, come a come a Christmas day. Come a come a call the angel, listen to the trumpet play. Come a come a stars in the heaven, shining along the way. Angels sing of Christ again, come a Christmas day. Christmas, come on, come on, Christmas Day. Come on, come on, Mary and Joseph, looking for a place to stay. Come on, come on, baby Jesus, better kneel down and pray. Come on, joy, baby boy, come on, Christmas Day. Come again Christmas, come again Christmas Day, come again three wise men, travel my long, long way, for the cuckoo's gift for the new banking, and we give gifts today, Christmas morning, when Christ was born, come on Christmas Day.
beloved St. Paul nation, we, the women of St. Paul, also known as Jules, are joining Mary in her song as she followed her son, Jesus, from the womb to the resurrection. As we bow our hearts in reverence, we remember that he was born for you and I. And now he sits at the Father's side in power, glory, and love, making intercession for us. We thank God for the greatest gift of all, and because of him, we, the Jewels of St. Paul, wish you a miraculous and Merry Christmas as we approach a blessed new year. Uh 
In tradition of the wise men, we give and receive gifts to remind us of the presents given to Jesus. But know that the best gifts we give each other cannot be bought in a store or stuffed in a box. We should celebrate Christmas by spreading the values Jesus stood for. Love, service, and faith. How might you ask? By giving the gifts of compassion during these difficult times, gifts of laughter when times are good, and gifts of prayer and comfort for the sick and shut in. The point is, Christmas can and should be about so much more than presents.
just want to take this opportunity to thank every one of our artists and our members and our entire Sacred Arts Ministry that has made this such an incredible night. I hope you've been blessed like I've been blessed. I want to thank Chair Bruth and the entire team for putting on such a phenomenal production. They've certainly given their best tonight. I want to talk to you just for a moment about this occasion where we celebrate God, not only giving God's highest, but God has also given God's best. For God so loved the world that God gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When the text says God has given, God has given God's best to us. In this moment, I want to encourage you to give your best to give your best as God has blessed you, as God has prospered you. As we think about this year and all that we've been through and how God has seen us through, to even arrive at this moment, to God be all of the glory. I want to encourage you to give as God has blessed you to do so. There are six different ways you can give to this ministry. You can give by way of text. You can give by way of Givelify website. You can give by mail. All the different sundry ways you can give. But in this moment, give from your heart and give the best you can as we continue to spread the good news of the gospel. Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verse 8. Therein you will find our text this evening. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. I want to talk this evening from the subject, His Highest at your lowest. God's highest at your lowest. Uh, as I look at this text this evening, I see the intersection of divinity and humanity, how God shows up when we're at our lowest point. The text tells us that in the same country, there were shepherds in the field keeping watch over their flocks by night. See, the announcement had already been made to Mary. Joseph was already queued up. But in this moment, the message came to some shepherds, some shepherds who were keeping their flocks by night. Text is clear. The context is nighttime. And somebody today, while I'm preaching, you know something about nighttime. 2020 has been nighttime. Yes, uh, our reality has moved to a moment and a season of nighttime. It's nighttime in our world. It's nighttime in our country. It's nighttime in our city. And for many of us, it's nighttime in our lives. And yet, in the midst of that, the text says an angel shows up a celestial being, not from these parts. A celestial being shows up with a message from on high. And the message is, is that God has visited you and there is a sign. 
You know, at nighttime, we can use signs. At nighttime, we can use signs that direct us, signs that cue us, signs that inform us. And the best sign at night is the one that's lit up. You know, when I was little, I would always look for lit up signs. You know, I don't do it as much now, but you know, when I would see the golden arch, arches, I would know that that meant McDonald's because the sign was lit up. Sometimes I would look for old school Jack in the Box because the sign would be lit up. And I would know where I was and I would know what was available to me because the sign was illuminated. The sign was lit up. As we drive and as we look for places whereby we can lodge or as we drive and as we look for places whereby we can get whatever we need to eat or perhaps we need to refuel our vehicles, we're looking for signs that light up. In this text, and in this moment, at nighttime, there is a sign, and the sign is lit up by a divine being called an angel. And the angel says, God has a sign to you. That's what I wanted to talk to you about tonight, that this sign has been crafted. This sign has been illuminated, and it's for you. Have you ever just wanted a sign from God? Have you ever just needed God to just send you a sign? Have you ever just wanted God to just speak into your life and illuminate what your direction should be or illuminate some counsel or some wisdom just to give you some answer or to just give you some hope? And we, we really need it most. We need it at nighttime. Well, here's what the text says. God has a sign for you. And that sign is this. A baby has been born. A baby has been born in a little town called Bethlehem. Yes, the city of David. A, a child has been born in fulfillment of prophecy. A child has been born because for unto us a child has been born and a son has been given. He shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Yes, unto you, a sign has been given. And what is that sign? What is the meaning of that sign? That sign means that God has not abandoned you. That sign means that God has gotten with us. That sign means that God got with us, that God might lift us. And you say, well, wait a minute, preacher. If God was going to send that sign, why did God send that sign to Bethlehem? Should not God have sent that sign to Jerusalem? Should not God have sent that sign perhaps to Rome? Should not God have sent that sign somewhere else whereby the masses could see it? Well, the text says that this sign is to all people, but the sign came first to those who were at their lowest. That's what I came to tell you today. The, the sign came and the angel came and illumined the sign to those who were at the bottom first. And that's the good news during this season of which we call Advent. That's the good news. It's for all people. But the good news is that the people on the bottom have not been left out. The good news is, is that God has a radical reversal plan in, in, in the text. You can see it, for this text is found in the Gospel of Luke. And in Luke's Gospel, Luke always talks about radical reversals. That means for those who have been on the bottom, when God shows up, God is able to take those who are on the bottom and, re, and God is able to reposition you and bring you to the top. I came to let somebody know today, if you are at your lowest, this is the moment to see the sign. If you're at your lowest emotionally, see the sign. If you're at your lowest economically, see the sign. If you feel like you're at the lowest relationally, see the sign. If you feel like you're at your lowest because you feel like you're depressed and in despair, I've got a sign for you this afternoon, this evening, that our Savior has been born in the city of Bethlehem, and you will find him there in a manger wrapped in swaddling cloths. And the 
good news of the text is, is that the angels cue for us how we should respond when we recognize and see the sign. For the angels began to proclaim and the angels began to celebrate and the angels began to lift up his holy name and they began to say praise God in the highest peace on earth and goodwill toward all men. The good news of the text this evening is that we serve a God who can meet us in our lowest moments, the highest for our lowest. We serve a God who can redeem. We serve a God who can heal. We serve a God who can lift. We we serve a God who can open doors. We serve a God who can make a way. We serve a God who can put food on tables. We serve a God who can do what no one else can do. We serve a God who can do the impossible. We serve the God who's able to make a way out of no way. My, my word for you tonight, my word for you on this Christmas Eve, when we've had such low moments, I need you to see the sign and the sign reveals to us God is not finished with you yet. God is not finished with you, and God is not finished with our world. Yes, beloved, God will give his highest for our lowest. God bless you, and don't let anybody steal your joy. Merry Christmas.